Okay, welcome back. Uh, Akin today, Padan Johnson is in the studio. Good morning, good to have you. Good morning, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Okay, let's start with Chan, of course. Nigeria is going to be playing against Benin Republic in the return leg in Kano this mm -hmm. weekend. And we are expecting so much. I mean, people have actually criticized what happened in Benin Republic, knowing that, I mean, Nigeria, we've got what it takes, you know, to get something out of that game. But somehow, we just couldn't do it in the first leg. Can we do it in the second leg? The truth is, um, and I'm being brutally honest here, I am most uninterested in the Chan okay. um, competition. Okay. Because I feel that as a people, we're too preoccupied with activities than to focus on the objectives. Um, the purpose for creating Chan is not so that we show up every time. It's so that we can give the talents that are domiciled in the local league an opportunity for expression at the international stage with, with a view to having some of them play for the main national team. Okay. So ask yourself, since you started participating in Chan, how many of the players who have done so well at the championship have made it into the main stage Super Eagles? The answer is almost none. Um, Ejike Ozoenyo, was his name, oh, who yeah, just joined Ajax yeah. Cape Town, yeah. was fantastic. That chant in South Africa where um, we, we lost, I think, in the finals to Morocco. But has he, has he made the grade? Has, uh, we finished third. Yeah. Has he made the, made the grade? No. Um, you look at, you know, the, the teams that go to that championship, in truth, we know that it would take a miracle of monumental proportion for any of them staying at home, play, playing their trade at home to make it into the senior national team and play against the likes of Iwobi, I mean, play with uh, he, the Hainachos of this world. So really, I think it's more activity than objective for us. So whether or not we lose or win, I really am not interested, but I hope that we're able to... But, but, uh, but for the sake of the players, be um, I understand where you're coming from. But yeah. having said all that, for the sake of the players involved, because that's their only chance under the sun, yeah. Uh, for the sake of those players, I'm sure you would hope and wish that they qualify. For the sake of the green blood that flows through my vein, <laughs> I would <laughs> always like for Nigeria to win a football match. <laughs> for the players. <laughs> I mean, the players, really, if you ask them on a personal level, oh. they will tell you the reason they play this is because of that tiny, winning little chance that a scout somewhere gets to see them and then they're delivered from what mentally they view as some kind of bondage which playing in Nigeria represents to them. So, in truth, the overall objective yeah. is quite unlikely to be achieved at some point very soon because okay. the level of the quality of the, of the league is still what it is. Um, not in any way, shape or form comparable to what is obtainable abroad. And for as long as we have more players playing abroad, we're never just going to look inwards to get players until they themselves migrate and start to play abroad. So the, we, we have to, to ask ourselves again, what purpose does this chan, uh, 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 championship uh, serve for us? What purpose really? Okay, uh, I think uh, Magic Penic would disagree with you on that one, talking about the fact that maybe some of these players may not make it into the Super Eagles squad. He's got one player in mind who he feels can even be playing for Barcelona right now. Listen to him. They, they are fantastic players. I mean, there's a player that I always admire, personally, Alassane, a fantastic player. That boy should go to Barcelona, not, you know, he's a fantastic player. I love his style of play. His, his passes are artistic, artistic, sublime, you know, and he knows how to control the game. I mean, I don't, if, 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 if the coach does not call him, I'll be very surprised uh, to be in this team. He's a good player, a very right, good uh, player. Fantastic. Yeah, so I hear him. I mean, and I don't doubt that there might be quality that is good enough to play for Barcelona. But the quickie question he needs to answer, and he, the national team managers would, would have to answer, is good as this player is, the next national team assignment, that game against Cameroon, or those games against, those crucial games against Cameroon, would they put Al Hassan straight in the, in, in the first 11? Would they even put him on the bench? Yeah, the I last guess time, as good as, as good as mine. The last time he made the team, but he didn't make the bench. Okay. So we <laughs> well, well, maybe we'll just uh, 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 let, let it rest. Where do we where do we go from here? Yeah, this Spanish Super Cup. I expected explosive game. I wasn't thinking they're going to do a PSG, you know what they did before. But I felt it was going to be a little bit competitive. But they're classical. Okay, we had the ninth being light up by lit up by Asensio, and that was it. Mm. Okay, Real Madrid two, Barcelona. Yeah. And it ended 5-1 on aggregate. It's supposed to be a Spanish Super Cup. How yeah. bad can um, it It was supposed to. I like how you ended it. It was supposed to be a Spanish Super Cup between two heavyweights, two of arguably the biggest teams in world football. But it was anything but. It was, it was a glorified training session at best. 
um, Real Madrid just you know strolled to a comfortable win. It could have been more embarrassing for Barcelona actually because um, Real Madrid missed opportunities I thought on another day with the squad. And let's not forget they started their front three were Benzema, Asensio. And um, the little kid on the, on the right, Vasquez, yeah. So there was no Gareth Bale, there was no Ronaldo, obviously, was suspended. Um, so by all intent and purpose, you would say it was an understrength Real Madrid team. But then again, they were comfortably, you know, uh, 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 superior than um, uh, Barcelona, which calls to question what exactly is going on at Camp Nou. Um, so a lot of attention naturally will be focused on Neymar. But I dare say that if Neymar was on that pitch, they probably would still have lost. Maybe not as... Uh, with a big maybe, margin. Maybe they would have played maybe better. They, yeah, maybe they would, have, they would have played better. They would have scored a couple of goals. But they would still have lost. The cracks have, have been there for all to see. Barcelona losing 4-0 to PSG in the first leg. Though they turned it around. Losing so easily against Juventus um, in the next round they last season. Turn it around. I mean, those were cracks. And Neymar was on the pitch. Was in those uh, uh, teams that lost. I think fundamentally, what Barcelona did in the last two transfer windows was atrocious. They, they bought players who essentially are lacking in the Barcelona DNA. They started Andre Gomez yesterday, and I dare say that whoever was behind the transfer of that guy <laughs> should be sacked, because not in a million years would he be good enough to play for a team at, of Barcelona's calibre. Um, Digne, uh, Lucas Digne, um, um, the, the guy from, from uh, Manchester City, um, Suarez, Denis Suarez, those are not Barcelona, Paco Alcázar, those are not Barcelona quality. More you don't trust... Even the guy they brought back from Everton now, um, uh, Delefeu, he's not Barcelona. He's not ready. So, okay. yes, I hear that they will finish the Coutinho and um, uh, Dembele we'll talk uh, about uh, uh, deals. But Paul, what a Paulinho still oh doesn't... Oh, my God. Paulinho was voted the worst Tottenham player in the season that he was bought for 30 million or so. It and he went to China. China. All of a sudden, Barcelona see him as the next best thing in football. Okay. The, the Messiah to save their midfield. So if Barcelona midfield in the last four years has lost Xavi, has lost Iniesta, mm -hmm. now wants Paulinho to come in and fix the problem. I mean, and they're Take a look at the price. The, 48 the, million euros at 29. That's how desperate Barcelona have become. These are the acquisitions. You've talked about it already, but the, the, the acquisitions of, of Barcelona, does this show ambition? It doesn't. This season.